Hey guys, welcome to the Ufala Art Talks. Thanks for joining us today. And I have a special guest for you today, but before uh, I introduce him to you, I want to do a little bit of PSA. Uh, start out just reminding you that we have the Yellow Submarine uh, Art Show that is going to be September the 19th. And that is along with the Chamber of Commerce uh, Art Festival. And uh, if you want more information on that or an application, just uh, contact us down here at the Main Street Salon. I mean, Salon, oh my gosh, studio. We do not do hair here. We have lots of painting and art though, so <laughs> be sure to join us. Um, I have a special guest today, and you're gonna see some of his art later. As you know, we meet here every Tuesday at one o'clock to introduce you to one of our local artists that uh, help to support uh, the art culture here in, around Eufaula. And I have met this guy um, out on the street during one of the festivals and he's a hoot. But I want to introduce you to a real live living zombie. And I'll let you him explain that to you here in a little bit. <laughs> but he's a lot of fun and a very talented uh, person, uh, artist who does digital art. And uh, that's something new and exciting that I'll let him tell you about. I want to introduce you guys to Ron Pitts from Muskogee. Welcome. Say hi, Ron. Oh, okay, I gotta take this thing off. Yeah, take that off. Uh, okay, hello, Paole. If you're listening in Hawaii. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm really jealous because I saw that you that you spent quite a bit of time in Hawaii. Yeah, 15 years. 15 years. And I was a cartoonist for the Maui Time newspaper every week, and because of the pandemic, they they uh, stopped printing. They still do it online, but they don't do the cartoon. And that book will probably come. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Ah, well, let me try to call when we're not really talking. Yeah, we're not talking they don't know about we're nothing. live here. Okay. All right. Well, we're back on track there. All right. So tell me about that. Was that in Boston, right? No. Was what? In Boston? Were you in Boston? Well, in I got out of the Navy in 1978, and I started working with rock and roll bands, and I was qualified at what I did, and I lied on the resume because everyone does, but. <laughs> no, no, everybody, I'm not saying nothing, but I was yeah. qualified and I could read, you know, all this stuff. So I worked with American Speaker, that was a company, but we developed the Flying PA. And yeah. the concerts now, there's no, there's no big speakers on the stage, they're all flying. Oh. And for seven years we got residual paychecks. Not we didn't get, but the company got it. So I had a little bit of job and I went to college and uh, I got my degree eventually. Uh, but while I was doing that, I worked for the Beat Magazine in Boston. That's the best entertainment I remember. No, you don't. It's I remember Boston. the beat. In Boston? Well, no, but I've seen it somewhere. I, well, I, yeah. It was back a digest, in my day. but still, everybody, yeah. all the nightclubs in Boston had it. And when you when you work in Boston, at, and this is in, during the '80s, uh, Boston was known for one thing and one thing only: Paul Revere dead, rock and roll alive. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. It was like, well, we don't care. We don't rock and roll. And maybe that's where I've seen that was in, in well, maybe, Boston. Because I spent some time up there. Well, you probably yeah. it was everybody read the beat. Yeah, the beat. And I did a half page cartoon. It was called Guido Incognito. <clears throat> it was about all the bands, oh. and it was just it was really a cool thing to do. But I was going to college, and I had other plans. However, when you go out on the road out of Boston, you're a not soft. That's Boston spelled backward. <laughs> and we did that because our our competitive juices on the road were a slut. That's Tulsa spelled backward. Oh my gosh. No, because all you know, record yes. companies are in LA and in New York, but the music is produced in Tulsa and Boston. That's where the college is, that's where everything is done. They've been, so now I got a studio, uh, it's called the Hummingbird Fine Craft, and it's across the street from the church studio. The church studio, I better see you there. They, they just bought it out, so Teresa Knox, she bought the place, and uh, it's where. Uh, Leon Russell and Eric Clapton yeah. and J.J. Kelly, everybody yeah. recorded there. So they was the sluts. We were not songs. Is there a problem with that? Not soft. <laughs> We're from Boston. Not soft. <laughs> Don't let the slut touch it. That was just a joke. No, but this was what we would do on the road, you know, because they were all the same. And we were all ex-military. So, oh, you guys smoked a lot of pot. And did. No, we didn't do any of that shit. Talk to the band. We don't do any of that. We did nothing. We got the job done. But that was my training. And then... Uh, uh, tugboats mm. took another toll on me, but I eventually got cancer. 
Uh -huh. And that's why I paint digitally. Because I can't touch paint because of the transdermal effect. Right. Now, is it really effect now? I don't know, but in 2003, I was scared. And they said, well, why don't you try digital? I said, oh, what am I, comic books? And he goes, oh, I'll try it. So I tried it. It took me a few years to get it together. But when you see my artwork, you realize, yeah. well, it looks almost photographic. It is very, very amazing. And I'm going to show that later. But uh, tell the people about your... Uh, experience with, uh, I, mean, I called you a zombie, a real live right, well, zombie. I, I, on November, I think it was the 8th, I'm not really sure, because I can't remember my middle name now. I just had open heart surgery, so my memory is a little, little lax. However, uh, at 11.51 in the morning, I passed away. I went into anaphylactic shock. My heart mm -hmm. shut down and my lungs shut down. And I was in what they call the SOFT program, Boston University Medical Center. And I had no hair, I had full body radiation, and it wasn't yeah. working. So they said, well, we want you to try this Canadian stuff, and it's called oxygen platinum chemotherapy. Well, I don't care, I'm dying anyway. What do, I don't really care. So I'll, well, you have to sign a release from the AMA, because it's not approved. And the AMA is protecting their ass. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Yeah. So I signed this release, and when I signed the release, I signed a release underneath it to take part in the blind blood study for stem cell research. So I don't know this guy that's coming in. Blood. I know that every two weeks they take my blood, mm. and I don't know what he did with it. I don't care because I'm dying anyway. But on the fifth visit at 11:51 in the morning, I went into anaphylactic shock, and this guy got off the elevator. I'm writing a book, so that's why I know exactly the time oh, it's awesome. this computer-operated you know, elevator. Yeah. But two minutes and 15, two minutes and 17 seconds later, he got off the elevator, and he restarted my heart. And nobody in the hospital could do it, but this combat veteran saved my life. And I, wow. that's when I realized that when they say time is money, they're wrong. You're wrong. They're wrong. Time, you're born and then you die. And that's your time. How you conduct yourself during that time determines how much money you make. That's all I'm saying. Awesome. Yeah. So now I'm an artist and uh, I've been an artist 50 years. That's this many times. 10, 10, 20, I don't know, <laughs> it's a lot of years, but that I did a lot of years. I did the Boston Beat Magazine, I did the Maui Time, I couldn't give artwork away because of the TSA out in Maui, oh you can't, thank you, you, you don't fly to Maui with stuff, you just go there and then you can buy stuff in the airport, disposable right. bathing suits for instance, because of the TSA, because of 9 11 so uh, when I came out here, I didn't know I was going to go to Muskogee. I didn't even know where Oklahoma was, except for I flew over it. That's all I knew. But I got a phone call, and I was in Dallas at the airport. And I always get a phone call. I said, oh, Sal DeFosco. He's a guitar professor at Berkeley College of Music in oh. Austin. It's not a bad school, I swear to God. It's actually berserkly pool of mucus, but that's an inside joke. But Sal sent me this thing, and usually he'd send me a message when it was a, a blizzard. I'm in Maui. What do I know? Oh, gosh. Snow. So he sent me this message, aloha, brah. You. Oh, it's snowing. Why can't I be there? And it was always the same message. And it was just a joke. But this time, it was a hurricane season. And I'm going out to the East Coast because they had wiped out Puerto Rico. Uh, all mm -hmm. the hurricanes came. This was three years ago. So mm -hmm. there was a lot of damage. And I was hooking up with this guy with a motorhome. He was going to drive the motorhome from Boston to Florida to sell it because there was a market for that stuff. And I'm in the airport in Dallas, and I get this message, and he says, you got to check out this girl playing guitar. And I looked, at the, I looked at the video, and it was a girl, 15 years old, long, dark hair, on Loretta Lynn's stage, all blacked out, one spotlight, and she was doing, note for note, perfectly, Eddie Van Halen's eruption, with the hammer on, the pull off, and the bar, and all that shit. So I was impressed, and I'm going to Boston. How, what's the likelihood I'm going to Boston at this time? Then I thought about time. Mm. And I realized nothing is coincidental. Nothing is coincidental. We're part of one system. And all systems in the universe can, either, well, no, no system real or imagined can completely and continuously work at 100% efficiency. The reason we have seasons, winter and summer, is because the earth doesn't rotate, it mutates. It's like this. So you go, oh, cold, oh, hot, oh, cold. Because it's not perfect. No system's perfect, so you have to deal with time. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm flying to Boston, so I painted this girl playing guitar. Mm -hmm. And he got it, and he went, wow, look at that. It looks like Melissa. He put it on his web Facebook page. Melissa saw it. She put it on her Facebook page. And that's my manager. That's her mother. So <laughs> everything happened 
Be wow. It wasn't planned that way. Yeah. And so I keep thinking, well, you know, the best thing I ever did was, was awesome. join the Navy, and I hated it. And the, the worst thing I ever did was the best thing that could happen to me, and I went through an epileptic shock. I died, and I'm back, so I am a zombie. And I was asked recently, like about 20 minutes ago, if I had any visions, and I did. And if you go into this woman's office, I think she's still there, but there's a placemat on the back side of there's a drawing of her in pencil. On the third day after I was, they put me in a coma, and they kept me down for three days, and they got my heart regulated, and everything was fine, and they brought me out, and then they brought food in in the morning, and they got this little table, of, you know those little tables they have, why do they have to have wipes, why, I don't know why there's a, anyway, they had a table, <laughs> they brought it in, and then my nurse, Cynthia Funderburg, who I love, uh, she came in, she goes, oh no, you got no food today, we feed you through your arm. I wasn't really hungry, but I was looking around like, what the hell is this happening, you know? So I said, can I get a pencil? Because I want to sketch something. And I saw this face. And I was looking at this face for like months. But I wasn't. I was looking at it for about 20 seconds. And the face I drew didn't have any hair. It was just, it was what's called the golden ratio or arc. One equals 1.618. This is how they do facial recognition, the computer set up like that. So I drew her face, and it looked just like her, but I didn't know who she was. And then the nurse saw her, she goes, oh, she's gonna love that. I said, who? Because that's, this is Saint, Dr. St. Croix. It's, uh, who? And she went, she was a black woman, very smart girl. She went, oh, lordy lord. <laughs> so she left. And then she came back 10 minutes later, and the woman I, I sketched walked into the room. Oh, wow. And I didn't, I was dead. Wow. But she opened my eyes and had a pen light and was looking for reactions to my eye to see if there's any reaction, because I don't have a pulse, but they wanted to see if there was any action. And um, I was looking at this face, but it seemed like months. I could see everything in the face. And I just sketched her. And she never put the hair on it, so she's got it in a frame in her office. Well, she had it, I'm sure she just still does. But um, my oncologist said, he goes, you know, you're the first artist we've ever had that, that came and went there and came back. And I didn't have any pictures, but I could paint. And that's when I decided to in invest my life into this. You know, I lost wow. a, My wife passed away. She was bipolar. I lost a child. Why do I have a gallery? Hey, hey, why do I have a gallery? I don't understand these things, but I don't question them because time is what, every day you get a coin and there's a good side and a bad side to every coin. And it's up to you to recognize the good side and the bad side. Now I'm going through a lot of depression because I had open heart surgery back in September and the depression is mindless. But when I get depressed, I go out and I make people laugh. And when I see them laugh, I can, even with a mask, I can see their eyes do this. <laughs> and when that happens, the reason you laugh and the reason you smile is because serotonin comes out of your GI tract. And when I see that, I react, and then I feel better about myself. Yeah. So when you see people, well, I had a miserable time, that's because you didn't talk to anybody. That's why you had a miserable time. You've got yeah. a brain, you have a heart, and you have the musculoskeletal tissue to pull all that stuff up. And I'm trying to do the best I can. That's why I came down here. I said, wow, I need to be one of y'all. This is awesome. This is <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, so well, uh, that's, that's amazing. So you, you, I'm you a were zombie. a child, I can't help it. when you were a child, did you do any art? Uh, yeah, I've been painting my whole life. Mm -hmm. I, I have Asperger's. I was diagnosed in 2003 with Asperger's because I, mm -hmm. I tried to take my own life. After I went through the death process, I came back. I got a note in the door. And Deutsche Bank was taking the house that I built because I had my wife had uh, she had uh, the power of attorney, and I was a tugboat operator two weeks on two weeks off. So you know you don't know if you're going to come back. So everybody had power of attorney. My wife I loved it to death, but she was bipolar. And when I went to see, she got off her medication and she became entirely untenable. And uh, then I got cancer. You know. The Navy will say, well, it's because of the reactor, and some people say, well, it's because of Agent Orange, but I will tell you, my opinion is, I got cancer because I wasn't sleeping, and I was worried about her constantly. And, uh, you know, uh, it was a different time. 
Yeah. And now I'm having a good time. Yeah, you're having you know? a good time. And so uh, every day is a new step, and I, I think everything is a challenge. And when I paint, I put my heart into it. I did a painting for this few people down here for today. I did it last night. I finished it. Awesome. It's a, it's a buffalo like that over there. It's got five little birds and another buffalo behind it and a nice sky. And, you know, it, but I did it because you follow arts and wanted to interview me. And I said, oh. well, that's a pretty good thing. Well, now, you were talking to me earlier that you have a Facebook page yep. and you, you draw or you do something on the Facebook page. Every time you do live, yeah, or? I don't use, I don't have a camera, so I don't put pictures up. I mean, I have photographs that people have sent me, and I said, well, that's kind of interesting. Dave Amato from Rario Speedwagon, we were in the same band again 35 years ago, so I got a picture of him. And just a few other people that are now, I guess they're famous, I don't know, but they have some pictures, but most of the paintings I do, I put on my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And I put enough time into them that you look at them and say, what kind of camera? But is that, what the? And they zoom in and they see brush strokes and they can't believe it. And, and I think that's kind of cool, you know. Yeah. Because uh, I, and I threw my life into this business and now it's paid off enormously. Well, let's, before we run out of time, I wish you could just give you briefly can kind of explain the process for your, for your digital painting. Well, uh, this is what I use. I used several photographs as a basis. Uh -huh. But if, if I was going to paint you, I'd have you. But if I had to paint with a live model, I'd be in jail because I would have killed you a long time ago. I'd choke <laughs> you. Shut up, dog. No, but I use photographs, and I know about the goal and the ratio. I went to art school. I went to I went to Northeastern to study engineering, but I took it for journalism and art. Now I'm doing journalism and art, <laughs> and the engineering's gone. Uh, but I use photographs, and I I take the values of the face, and then I, mm -hmm. I come up with. I usually paint the background separate. I figure the background out. I use a lot of brush strokes for the skies because I love doing skies. I used to do a lot of sunsets on Maui, but now it doesn't really too much work here because, you know, what? Whoa, whoa, work and soul. I don't know. Oh, it's the Hawaiian <laughs> thing. But I still I still do that stuff. And I, yeah. I am, you know, I spend 12 hours a day painting. And then I put it on Facebook. And that's my mm. pictures. And in your studio, in your art, your yeah. ga gallery, studio. Right? Well, the gallery is different. I, I, there's a lot of Eric Clapton. Well, I just sold an Eric Clapton piece, but Eric Clapton, Leon Russell, J.J. Kale, a great player who saved who saved um, Eric Clapton's life back in 79 when he was doing a lot of cocaine, doing a lot of whiskey. He hooked up with J.J. Kale, who brought him to Tulsa, and J.J. Kale said, I reckon this is what you play, not that other stuff. And they started doing music, and there was no alcohol, no drugs, and he has a, for 10 years, he recorded there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Eric Clapton is an incredible individual, but so is J.J. Kale, he passed away. And Tom Tom Petty, you know, he was up there, he did a lot of albums up there, and these guys are all dead. So I did one picture of all of them sitting on the front steps of the church studio, and only Eric Clapton is still alive. But I got them all sitting there with guitars, and they're on the church studio. When you look at it, it looks like a photograph. I'm just saying. Wow. I'm not a photographer, but I think it looks good. Yeah. So let's do a PSA. What's the, where, where is the gallery? What's the address? It's Street Trend, South Trenton. What? <laughs> she has no voice. It's Fourth, Fourth and Trenton. Trenton. It's okay. actually, they changed the name to Leon Russell Road, but it's oh. Fourth and Trenton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm right off there in Utica. Yeah, but, it, but it's okay. right there in the Pearl District, and it's well known. Everybody up there knows about it. And and like I tell everyone, we're going through a pandemic right now. Yes. And once we went through a black plague, and you know what happened after the black plague? The Renaissance. Oh yes. Only this time, the Renaissance is not going to be powered by sailing ships. It's going to be powered by cell phones, and it'll happen quickly. And we did a show, I worked every Saturday, and I sold over $1,000 last Saturday. None of my stuff, but people are coming in, they're starting to come in. It's become a, a fashionable place to be. And they're doing a lot of uh, promotion for the church studio, and why wouldn't they? But they're gonna reopen this fall, and they're gonna have shows, and I'm trying to get Eric Clapton to come in. Because I used to work with his people, I don't know the same company that he, that he used to work with, but I know a lot of people who know who he is and how they can get him. And yeah. he still has property here, you know. Yeah. And Jamie Oldick, he just died two weeks ago. And, he, you know, he did a couple of albums with uh, um, 
Eric Clapton, and he worked a lot out of that studio. Everybody worked out of the studio. No one knows about it. You know? wow. So I'm hoping things work well. And you follow, by the way, this place right here. I've done shows on here, and they're all exceptional shows. You follow Oklahoma. No, no. Come down here. All right, swear to God, I'll come be nice to you. You don't want that to happen, because I can take <laughs> hours to be nice to people. That's well, what I would say. we're about to run out of time, but gosh, it's been very interesting, and we really do appreciate you coming down. I want to show some of your work. I think you should. Do you want to talk about some of it sure. as we as we walk? Okay. So, bear with us, guys. We are going to switch around here and um, look at some of this artwork. Sure, appreciate you guys joining us in today. Now, this one, okay, you guys, tell me about this one. Reminds me a little bit of the, the well, Umbrella Man. Yes, I see that to you. Stormy skies. Is there a story behind that? No, actually, it was. Uh, this was when I first came to Oklahoma, and I didn't really know what it was. But this is Eufaula. There's Eufaula. Yeah, because yeah. I needed to be near the ocean. And I know all about the ocean, ah. and I did that like three years ago when I first came. Yeah. But some of them are different. Some of them are not so different, and mm. uh, some of them are. Exceptional, yes. but oh. they're just exceptional because of the people involved. Yeah, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. I like this little one down here. Right. And these are also very cheap. I sell them, but I'm not trying to make money. So, you know, that's a, so, a train whistle. I'm sorry about that. But these are <laughs> they're really inexpensive because if I was trying to make a lot of money, I'd sell Lexuses, but I don't have... <laughs> Heat in my back seat. This is uh, oh. I mean, I don't want the fly. Yeah, fly. Look at this one. Oh my gosh. That's my cat. That looks like, yes, I heard to say, that looks like my cat when she's mad at me. There's a cat here, and there's a cat oh, there. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I see it now. Oh, wow. So all these are available for purchase, yeah, right? Except for this one. This one belongs oh. to Glenna McBride. And oh, friend. that's ours. And that's the one you just did. Yeah, I did oh it last gosh. night. I just finished it. And this is... This Look at is that. The big and the little. The good and the bad. It's about life. And that's what I'm saying. Oh, let's see if I get a good picture. Let's see if I get a good... That is so cool. And this one here is about a Cherokee Indian who fishes using nature. See, that's what he fishes with. Oh. <laughs> So they're all kind of cool. And that cloud is very interesting in the background there. You can almost see some. Well, wow. I see clouds like that like here a lot. I've too. seen stuff I've never seen since I came here. Look at that. That's me. I'm, just, I'm trying to wrangle. Uh, I'm learning how to. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Then, well, we have some of his work here in the studio. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think we got rid of it. Somebody bought it or. Well, we got rid of it, but well, we didn't get rid of it. We. It was one that you donated. I know, I don't care. Ah, well, we will definitely need to have some of your work down here, and uh, I guess we may see you in at the festival. Yeah, I think I will. Yeah. And I'll do this, just so you know, it's not really me. Or I can do this. Oh, that's Japanese. I'm sorry. Uh, no, uh, my career is down here. I'm an I'm an Oki from Muskogee, but. Uh, Everything I do now is about artwork, and that's all I care about. And I don't care if I, I, I'll go without a meal. I, I was in the Navy. I know how to go without meals, but I can get along pretty nicely here. And it's a hell of a lot cheaper than Maui. You know? mm -hmm. What about some encouraging words to people that are interested in becoming artists or pursuing art if, if you have a passion, as a livelihood? <laughs> if you have a passion for anything, if you want to draw someone with a really long head with a pointy nose, but you want to, you have the passion to do that, do it. Do it yeah. because no matter what it is, you have thumbs. We all have thumbs. We've destroyed a planet, but we can mm. be creative, and this is how we're creative with our thumbs. So I don't care what, if, if you want to play a musical instrument or to paint or whatever. It's an expression of your heart and your soul. And if you if you do it for any other reason, you're selling out. And that's why I don't like uh, oh you know Monet. I don't want to hear about those people. I want to talk about people that create something and walk away. But when I sell our work, I don't want to sell it online. I'd rather sell it and look someone right in the eye, you know, because there's a communication thing and then I get a charge from that. And that's all I want to do. Okay. Well, I don't want to be rich. I just want to be successful. And there's a difference.
That's right. Well, thank you so much for being here. It really means a lot to us, uh, your support for uh, the arts in general, but for the uh, Ufala Arts Council has been very helpful. And uh, we just appreciate you so much and the beautiful art that you create and uh, the beautiful soul inside as well. <laughs> All right. We'll see you. Thank you so All much right. for joining us today. Okay, guys, Ooh, that was big. Thank you so much for being with us today. We will see you next week. I think we have uh, Zach Robertson, a musician, next Tuesday right here at 1 o'clock. You guys join us. Thanks for being here. Bye.